All right, guys, welcome back to the show. Uh, today, it's going to be about framing up our end wall. Once you get your two side walls up, you got to put an end wall up to get trusses up. So we're going to cover that. And then we will cover all of the bolt insulation for our bracket to column connection point. But before we get started, if you want to design a post frame home, building, garage, barn dominium, whatever you want to call it, we can help you out with that. We have full design services. Email us, design at Mr. Post Frame and we will uh, get you going in the Barnuminium design process. Also, we have a self-build group, which is a pretty cool group to be a part of. It's a group of self-builders. We talk about different building topics. You guys get to ask questions. We have lives. We bring on other people in the industry. For example, I got Spray Jones coming on in our next live, which is gonna be pretty cool. And so it's a great community of other self-builders that you can get information from, so check that out. But let's go ahead and jump into the show. So when you're doing standing these individually, I measure from my string line over to whatever column I need to get a length on. And that's how I cut my boards. And then I just match that up um, as we go along. You can see I got a mark right here that lines up in the center. Cause I know this post to that post is eight foot. So I know that I needed to move that mark to the center of this post. So it's where it's at. So we're just gonna work our way across and then we'll work our way up.
that middle one. Measure from the center there to the center here. And make a mark. Right here, Jake. Strike a line, and that's what goes in the middle of the post. One more. Yep, one more, quick. Perfect. Good catch. So one thing to mention on our end wall columns is I do the calculations when I'm getting my materials and I want my columns to go all the way to the top core of the truss. I'll take all three plies or four plies in this case and I will run them all the way up to the top core of the truss. That way that truss is attached to that column in multiple locations and it goes all the way down. Um, I feel like that's a better connection than stopping them short. Some guys will run one ply, which is fine, um, but I run all three ply or four ply all the way up to the top cord. So here's the brackets we typically use. Um, there's a couple different fasteners we use. We can have a couple uh, lags that go into each side and those are what we initially put in when we're installing our column. We raise our wall, get these in here, plumb it, and then we run these lags in. There's two on each side. So you have one here, one here, and then on the opposite side of the bracket they're in different spots so you don't run them into each other. So on the other side that one's over here and over here so you can see how they're um, opposing then um, we'll come back these are half inch through bolts so you got to get a half inch drill bit that'll go all the way through drill through as straight as possible um, if you do it enough you can usually hit that hole if not you drill in as far as you can then you go to the other side and drill back the other way um, if you're off a little bit don't worry it's going to suck this tight when you tighten these up you will see this bracket kind of suck in to the column and that's what you want nice good tight connection and once you tie uh, get all these bolts in this is all tied together and it's not going to go anywhere once all your sheathing and all that's on it it's a really good secure connection as far as the corner brackets or garage door opening this is a corner uh, column so you can do this in two ways you can use a universal bracket or you can use a wet set bracket and cut half of it off, which is what we did. Um, I started doing that, so this is a wet set bracket, and then I just cut this side off. And then we use uh, carriage bolts. You can use a regular bolt too, and then you just have to suck it in where it's flush um, with the column. This one you necessarily wouldn't have to do that, but down here where the grade board goes, you would have to do that. Or um, you'd have to drill a hole and do it. So this is just how uh, it works out good. 
um, is just to use carriage bolts, suck them in flush. So here is a garage door opening right here. Um, we just used a universal bracket here, which has got a SDS uh, screw anchor in it. This is a 5 8 inch, and then it's got two uh, smaller anchors in it just to keep uh, from twisting. And then we got through bolts here. You can see that we ran them flush. Um, you could use a wet set bracket here and then just cut it off. You just have to make sure that um, you're good on your measurement and that your door opening is going to be the width that you want. All right, so that's going to be a wrap on today's show. Just real quick, we will build our side walls, then one end wall, and we leave one side open so that we can drive our equipment in and set the trusses. So we'll set all the trusses until we get to that last bay, and then we will build out that end wall, set our last truss. Um, but anyway, as always, we appreciate you guys watching. If you haven't already, hit that subscribe button, share us with your friends, and we'll catch you on the next video.